What's going on, everybody? We are going to be setting up StreamerBot with OBS and Twitch. StreamerBot is an amazing software that allows you to take full control of your stream. It's without a doubt one of my favorite things that I've been using recently, and I'd like to share it with you guys on how it's done. So let's get into it. So we're going to start off by going to StreamerBot website. So it's going to be streamer.bot. You can find the link down in the description, or you can just type in streamer.bot. Right there, and you're going to go over to streamer bot here on the main page. You're going to download. Save it somewhere that you can remember. I'm going to put it in my stream folder. And from there, you want to go over to that folder. And you want to extract it. So you want to right click. And extract all. Once you extract it to the location that you prefer, you're going to get this crazy folder full of random nonsense. The only thing that you want to really pay mind to is the actual application that's within that folder. So when you find that, it should just say streamer.bot, and it should be as a type of application. When you double click that, it should automatically pop up with the program, and you don't even have to worry about installing it. It's just a, a running application. And boom, you get this somewhat pleasing looking application it's not the greatest looking thing but it does a lot of things and i promise you it's it's not the looks that matter it's what it does so we're gonna jump right into the setup for twitch so you simply go over to platforms you'll see all these different tabs i should probably point that out first all these different tabs have a lot of different things but we're not gonna go far into these you guys can tap into the other videos that i'm gonna be releasing every week hopefully if not every bi-weekly and it'll be tips and tricks and different things on how to, to run this application. But we're just going to talk about how to set it up with Twitch and OBS for today. So we're going to go over to platforms. And we're going to go to Twitch. Within Twitch, we're going to go over to accounts. On the accounts. Let's make this full screen. Make it easier to focus on it. So you're going to want to log in. Now, you'll notice that there's two different things. You have a broadcaster account and a bot account. The broadcaster account is actually your main account. And bot account could be a secondary account that if you want to use a bot account and not have like your actual name popping up as the, the response for like commands and such, you can do that. But for this tutorial, we're going to strictly just stick with broadcaster. So let's log in under the broadcaster account. Should automatically take you to Twitch. If you're already logged in on that browser, your default browser, it should take you to your account and ask you to authorize. I'm doing it. I'm not going to say you have to, but in order to do this, you're going to need to. So once you do that, it'll say successfully done. We can return back to the application and voila, we're already linked with Twitch. It's that easy. Like it literally took us no time and you're already linked with Twitch. You can technically start setting up commands, but what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next step, which is actually going to be setting up OBS. For those of you that have already downloaded and installed OBS and have it running and you're just strictly doing this for a streamer bot, you'll be able to skip on to the next section. I'll have it cut up in chapters and just go to the linking OBS with streamer bot chapter. But for those of you that don't already have it, we're going to show you where to go to download OBS and we're also going to download install, do some basic settings and get into installing or linking streamer bot with OBS. So in order to get OBS, you're going to want to go to obsproject.com. You'll notice that you have three different options. We're all doing Windows here on this tutorial, but if you're doing Mac OS and Linux, I would probably go search a different video just because this is probably not going to be useful for you. But for the sake of Windows users, make sure you download. Download it somewhere you can remember. I'm going to go back into that stream folder that we did for StreamerBot. Once you do that, go to that folder and you should have an installer. Now I'm going to go ahead and click and install this. It's going to ask you a few things. It's going to ask you for all your information. It's going to, you know, get permission to own you. Just kidding. It doesn't do that. And then you're going to pick your file that or folder that you want to install it into. I'm going to install it to the default just because I like it to be on the C drive and it's just easier overall, especially when getting into plugins and such like that. It's 
we're going to install it. Once you have it installed, go ahead and launch OBS and press finish. Now, once you open up OBS, you're going to be set up to set it up. <laughs> Imagine that, right? So we're going to optimize this for streaming. Recording is going to be my secondary for this. This is my secondary PC, so we don't really need to do too much with this. And then you want to change your base canvas to whatever you prefer. I'm going to use 1920 by 1080. That's my preference. And then I'm going to go with 60 frames. That's just what I've always used. And that's what's on my main thing that you guys are actually watching the recording from. So we're going to press next. You're going to choose your Twitch service for this tutorial. We're doing Twitch. You guys can also go into other applications, but for the sake of this, stick to Twitch. We're going to connect account. We're going to sign in. Once you get your account signed in and linked, you're going to go ahead and press next. Leave these alone. Don't mess with them just because you want to be able to finalize this correctly. It's just doing a quick test. Okay. Once you finalize your testing, go ahead and apply settings and boom. Now you should have your OBS and as well as your two docs that are going to come with your Twitch account. So I have my chat here. I'm just going to throw this down here for now. And then also my stream information, just going to throw that down there too, just because we don't need that for this tutorial. All right. So now we have OBS installed. We can go ahead and put this to the side and go back over to StreamerBot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to link StreamerBot up with our OBS application. Simply go over to Stream Apps on the top tab. And OBS should be the first one. You also have Streamlabs and Polyplop. This one's strictly for OBS. So we're going to leave this selected. And we're going to go down to this open box right here. There's nothing going on. And we're going to go ahead and right click Add. We're going to name it OBS. We're going to keep it on version 5. You're not going to mess with the host. But you're going to keep in mind that port number. The 4455 for me. It's probably going to be the same for you. Now, I also like to auto connect on startup and reconnect on disconnect. I just change this down like short period of time. Press OK. And once you do that, you should have this here. It's not going to be connected just yet because now you have to go over to OBS. In OBS, you're going to go over to tools on the top left. And you're going to go to WebSocket server settings. In here, you're going to want to enable WebSocket server. And you see that port is going to be 4455. You can uncheck this enable authentication unless you prefer to have the extra piece of security. I'm just going to disable it just because we don't really need it. And then from here, you're going to press apply. You're going to allow it. Press apply one more time just to verify. <laughs> but go back over to the streamer bot and you'll see that it's still not connected just yet. It says status disconnected. But in order to do that, you just right click. And you're going to do connect and boom you'll see the status changes to connected if you did it properly if not make sure to go back in this video and find your way to it all right so now that we have this all done we can go ahead and explain a little basics of how the application works we're going to go with the actions tab on the top when you go to the actions tab you're going to see three main components these are like your your freaking meat and potatoes to the application. Everything you're going to be doing is mostly going to be found within this part of it. Obviously, we can branch off and do other things. You can see all the crazy other options that there is with this application, but these are your, your bread and butter. So you'll see here on the left side, you have the biggest one here. It's called actions. This is pretty much like your filing cabinet. This is where you're going to put all of your tasks and everything that happens within this actions tab you're able to sort it and file everything away and make it nice and organized an ocd's dream so what i'm going to show you is if you right click you can add an action here we're just going to add a test action and you'll notice that there's actually a group category here we don't have any groups created but you can create one so we're just going to call this youtube test And you have all these other things. We're not going to mess with any of this. This is just going to be strictly to make sure that we're connected to Twitch and OBS. 
So once you press OK, you'll notice that you have a blue font. It might be a little bit different depending on your visual settings, but you're going to have like a lighter colored font on the top. That's going to be your category. And then beneath that is going to be anything you have within that category. So we have our test action. Now this test action, when you have it selected here in this panel, you actually are within it on the triggers and sub actions. So you'll have triggers, sub actions. Triggers are going to be what triggers the action to happen. So whatever you want to do in the chat to cause, you know, a command to happen, this is where you're going to put your triggers. Now, if you want the command to respond with something, so let's just say we're going to, we're going to do exclamation point something. So in order to add a trigger, it's the same way you do actions. You're going to do a right click and you're going to core and we're going to add a command. So we're going to go to commands and command triggered. Now, because we have a fresh install, there's nothing going on here. So we have to create ourselves a command. So we're going to create command. We're going to do exclamation point. Or we're just going to name this test. And then here, we're going to do exclamation point test. Now, the name doesn't really affect what is said in the chat. It's more so down here where it says commands. You can add all kinds of different ones. I always do shift enter and, you know, let's just do test thing. So both these commands will trigger whatever is going to happen next. We're not just there yet. So let's go ahead and look at everything else that we have to mess with. Now you'll have groups here. So if you like to do, you, you know, keep everything organized, you can do that. So we're going to call this YouTube test as well. And then the next section, you'll see options and sources options. I've never really messed with, but you can go ahead and mess with it if, if you please. And then sources is going to allow you to do different sorts of things. I'm going to keep it as Twitch, but if you have YouTube linked to it as well, you can also check it off here so that your commands are cross platform. It's a pretty important thing there. Then moving on to the next section, you'll see cooldowns. You'll have a global cooldown where basically it's a cooldown for everyone that's using it all together. So if I do this command, nobody else can use the command until this cooldown's over with. Now, then you also have on the right side, user command or user cooldown. User cooldown is going to be specifically to the person using it. So if I use this command, somebody else can still use it as long as there's no global cooldown. But I personally can't use it until my user cooldown goes to zero. So we're not going to mess with that just because we don't need to, just because it's a test command. Now, if you move over to the right, you'll see permissions. The permissions, I've always used the allow all or only those. I've never really messed with anything else other than that. And basically the way that works is you have the available things to make it allowed to only a specific user. So right now you have the options of moderators, subscribers, and VIPs. So if I wanted this test command to only be able to be used by my moderators, I would select moderators here, which it already is. And I would click these two little arrows over and it'll move it to the allowed category. Now, what that's going to tell this application is that anybody that is a moderator is allowed to use this command, but nobody else can outside the moderator's tag. So once you have that set, you press OK and press OK again. And now you'll notice in your triggers under your test is going to be your test command. Lots of tests. <laughs> now we have to figure out how to make this test command do something. So now we're moving on to the next section of sub actions. Sub actions is basically anything that responds to a trigger. So here we want something to pop up in the chat so that we know the, the trigger is working. So we're going to right click within sub actions and we're going to go down to Twitch. And then from Twitch, we're going to go to chat and we're going to send a message to channel. This is just going to be a basic response from the preferred account being broadcaster. Make sure you switch that if you haven't linked a bot account. Now in the message, we're just going to say confirmed. Now this should respond in the chat as confirmed when we type exclamation point test or testing. So press OK. Now we have a Twitch message to pop up whenever we have this trigger initiated. So now that we have a sub action for the Twitch message to say confirmed in the chat, let's go ahead and test it by going over to OBS and pulling up our Twitch chat. You'll see that we've done it a couple times because we messed up. So exclamation point test, and you'll see that confirmed pops up immediately after, and that's under our account. If you have a bot account and you set it up as a bot account, it'll be your bot account that should pop up here that says confirmed. Now, in order to test to make sure that this is communicating with OBS, we already confirmed that Twitch is working. So let's find out how to do OBS. So we're going to create a new scene. We're just going to call this test. 
in this test scene, we're going to create a color source. This color source is just going to be color source two. And we're going to select the color of green. It doesn't matter. This is not important what color it is or what it's named or anything. This is strictly just to make sure that our streamer bot is communicating with OBS properly. So we're going to press OK. And now we have a scene called test with a color source two. Now let's go back over to streamer bot. And we're going to mess with this test command that we already have created. Now we're going to delete this by clicking on this trigger called core command. We're going to right click on it and we're going to delete this trigger and press yes. And I'm going to show you a different way to test things without having to actually type in your chat. So we're going to right click and we're going to do core and we're going to do test. We're going to press OK. And now we have a test trigger. Now this is literally going to be us clicking on it and it's going to test whatever we want the sub action to do. We're going to delete the sub action that we have for the Twitch message by right clicking on it. We're going to delete sub action, press yes. And now we have no sub actions. We're going to add a new one. That's going to allow us to know if it's communicating with our OBS or not. So we're going to right click and we're going to add an OBS and we're going to go to sources. Remember that source that we did that color source. We're going to toggle that and make sure that it's working. So we're going to go over to sources and set source visibility state. Now, when you go here, ours already by default, pick that one, but what you would do is you're going to pick that scene, which was test for us. And you're going to pick the source, which is color source two for us. Once you do that, we're going to toggle its visibility to be hidden. We're going to press OK. And now let's pull them up side by side. We have OBS and StreamerBot both open side by side. And now we have our color source visible. We want to test to see if it goes hidden. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our source trigger right here and we're going to test trigger. And you'll notice immediately on the left side in our OBS window that the, the source toggled off. So that automatically tells us that StreamerBot is successfully working with OBS and we don't have to worry about having issues in between those communications. All right. And that's pretty much it, guys. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to like the video let me know in the comments below that it worked out for you if you have any questions make sure to hop into our discord we have a community server where i'm always tending to and i can help answer questions live there and also tune in on tuesdays for tech tuesdays on twitch and if you want to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe so you can get notified when we release more i appreciate each and every one of you guys hope you guys have a fantastic day peace